live, British Cheese Weekender. We live. Hey. <laughs> this is, oh, this is so exciting. Ha have you been enjoying British Cheese Weekender? It, it, what? It's not British Cheese Weekender, Big Cheese Weekender. Uh, Jane, let's have a look. So Jane needs to request to yeah. join. Jane. If you do plus, invite. Hi. Oh, I'm... Hey. Excellent. Hey. Where did... Oh, wait. Oh, my cheese is... Oh, I'm going to flip it back. Maybe it'll be... Can you, see, can you see the cheese? No, I can't see the cheese. Can anyone else see the cheese? Oh, so because there's two of us. Yeah. Oh, there's two okay. of us. Yeah. There's two of us. Yeah. Oh, this is going to... Hey, Jane, this is going to be so much fun. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm good. Um, I'm just thinking of... Yeah. A, because I was planning to put my camera this way. Yeah. We're not, Jane. Hey, Jane, we're not. We're live. Yeah, Just... I know. I'm gonna say hi, everybody. Yeah, this is so much fun. So yeah. So have you got your block cheddar, and your? I've got my block cheddar and your cloth bound quicks cheddar. And I've got my mature uh, quicks, and I've got my vintage quicks. I hope everybody's going to be tasting along. Hope there's some great stuff. Do you know? What I just okay. can't. Yeah. I'm, I might struggle to see all the all what's on the what's on the the screen because my phone's quite a long way away. I'll so you... keep I'll keep an eye out on that. So do you wanna? Should we start with some introductions? Yeah, sure. Well, we're not. Or are we are we a bit we're a bit early. We're, we're a bit early. Six thirty. So you probably can't see it, but we've got some cheese that we're going to be talking about. Here, look. can you see that? There's a block cheddar. There's a nice. Moldy rind, mm, moldy, and a pork <laughs> cheddar with no mold. Yeah. Well, it's just kind of great, just to not dissing anything. Hi, Phil. Yeah. Hi, Rosemary. Oh my goodness me! There's also some great people there. Look at that. That's so much fun. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> So, Jane, we haven't really practiced this, so we're just going to have to dance backwards and forwards, aren't we? Sounds good. Well, we did. We talked about it. We right? talked about it, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. if anybody has any questions, feel free to use the chat um, while we go along. Yeah. How many have we got? 14. Oh, great. So much. Good. Hope everybody's been enjoying Big Cheese Weekender. What a fabulous thing. Talking to people right around the world about cheese. Jane's in Toronto. I'm in Devon, England. So, yeah. Yeah. Cheese is fairly, yeah, liked around the world. Cheese. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Joins us all. <laughs> yeah. That, right. Yeah, because uh, uh, Japanese. Japanese. Uh, Whiskey pairings, I mean, my goodness me. What, a, what an amazing weekend of all things cheesy. All things cheesy. But the, we've got a question, Mary. How's the surf? Have we been surfing in Devon recently? I ha when did I last go surfing? Unfortunately, with all that amazing hurricane weather, the surf has been fantastic. But um, mm. uh, yeah. Hello from Norway. Hello from Canada to Norway. Oh my goodness. Wow, isn't that so cool? We're, we're nearly there. Should we kick off at exactly half past or should we wait for people to join? I think half past is fine. We can, you know, we can, when it's, when it's half past, we start and it's a, people can drop in. I think it will be fine. Hi, Norbert. <laughs> Oh, wow, Norbert. Hi, Norbert. Oh, I should have had some Alpen cheddar here. <laughs> Did everybody know about this amazing collaboration? We send our cheese uh, grated cheddar to, to Norbert in, uh, in Germany. 
and Albert Krauss puts it in his Alpine cheese mate to make the absolutely epic Alpen cheddar. I had some with some roasted vegetables for my lunch today because I just do love that cheese. It's an amazing combo of Alpine with cheddar with cheddar notes. It's just mm. a really, it's completely wonderful, fantastic. Yeah. Drink, drink, drink with a Bavarian uh, Bavarian beer and wurst and sausages. Ooh, I haven't tried it, it with sausages. It's so it's so uh, savory and meaty and delicious. Yeah, I've I've only had it. I mean, the main well, not I've only had it. The main way I like love to have it is with um like a sort of raclette type thing. Oh yeah, cheering up vegetables with with um, cold roasted vegetables. Put a, some slices of um, Alpen cheddar on them and just heat mm -hmm. that up, and it just. It's just, yeah, it's lovely. Hey, should we, should we go for yeah, it? Yeah, let's kick off. Let's do it. Yeah. Right. So I'm Mary Quick, a farmer and cheesemaker from Devon. Uh, uh, over to you, Jane. And uh, I'm Jane, Mary's daughter. And I'm my generation of the family is the 15th generation uh, on the farm uh, in Devon. So, yeah. Welcome. Yeah, really welcome. And... Um, what we're going to be talking about is really, you know, we make this traditional farmhouse cheddar, um, cloth bound, with cloth, handmade, and, um, you know, cheddar's this huge thing where people make cheddar all over the world, and mainly they make it like that, and that's a, kind of it said that it really works, it's, I mean, if, in, if you're in a big cheddar dairy, you'll you'll a cheddar factory you'll be making as much as we make in a year in a day and you won't have any people there so of course it's going to be a lot cheaper but so what we're looking to do is to try and find out what we mean what what why you might want to spend the extra money for a handmade small batch traditional cheddar when it's the same recipe or not the yeah. same recipe, but the same kind of cheese is that that's what we're yeah. talking yeah. yeah, what we're talking that's what we're talking about. And what what are you paying for? Yeah. Yeah. So hey. I I guess um you know the first thing first kind of big difference about a farm made small batch cheese to uh, an industrial cheese is that industrial cheese will be made in a factory it will have a a huge milk pool or a, a milk pool it will be pulling milk from lots and lots of farms but we have got one farm, our cows that we breed, uh, and and the and uh, uh, on the farm, we've got control over the breeding, over what the cows eat. Um, you know, the, uh, for us, what we want is that lovely grazed grass flavour um, that you get when the cows are out there pretty much all the time. Uh, I mean our cows are out grazing from Valentine's Day to Christmas and you get those lovely grazed grass flavours. With the breed of cow that we've got, you know, we're able to select the cows that we want, exactly the right the right the cows that we like for our for our for our cheese. And for us that's a combination of Frisian, Holstein, Swedish red, um, and a little bit of Montbelliard in Jersey. Whereas if you're making from a huge milk pool, you'll just be, you'll be buying from the farmers who, who are your suppliers, and you kind of you won't really have that contact. A um, lot of um, bigger farmer, uh, bigger dairies do factories do work with them, and you know with uh, to so that they're thinking about climate or welfare, or you know give some guidance about the kind of milk they want uh, but mainly it's just uh all those signals are, are by what what you pay for rather than you know what, what the money is so yeah i don't does it is that being clear i feel like i'm at the end of the weekend and i'm all tongue-tied jane does that does that make yeah, sense so, yeah so and what i think that what's what we really notice when we're making our cheese is you know when the cows have it's too wet for the cows to be outside and we're feeding them on on silage or or um hay that the quality of the milk and the, the cheese that's made from that milk is different and through the years we've experimented with different 
um, things that feed the cows when they're not feed, fed on grass, which is obviously most of the year they're fed on grass, but, um, and you really notice it. And so um, when you're, when you're pooling from all of these different herds you might not have control you know different farmers are uh, feeding their cows different things you might not have control you might you might be able you know if you've got um farmers who are willing to be flexible with you then um you might as a cheese maker you might be able to have an influence on um on what the cows eat uh, with the milk that you're using but actually probably uh, most of the time especially the bigger bigger uh, dairies it, it's very difficult for them to control um, what their cows are eating and that really will impact um, impact the cheese yeah and I guess the thing is that um, what's interesting is if you have a single farm's milk how different that milk will taste from your next door neighbors and that's a combination of breed and feed so you start to get this kind of distinct distinctiveness that what you're buying when you buy from small batch cheese is a flavour of that particular place, which I think is one of the kind of really exciting things about about uh, um, cheese, about, about small batch cheese. And shall we, um, shall we and talk about? Talk about uh, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. What did go. you say? No, go ahead. I was going to yeah. ask um, oh. something, but I'll do it later. Sure. Um, and then we milk our cows. Milk our cows twice a day, most of the time. And I guess that then you get into, you know, what you do with that milk. Unfortunately, currently, we have to pasteurize our milk, which is really sad. But that, actually, we do that really carefully. Um, and, I, and um, uh, you know, to not to do as little damage to the milk as possible. And I guess what we're, what we're doing is what the starters that we're using were originally derived from raw milk. Um, they were they were our heritage starters were collected from the best cheese dairies in the 1960s and the 1970s and so shall we shall we just talk about starters i mean, I mean I, lo most people i'm sure loads of people will know what starters are but but shall we talk about what because you know lots of vocabulary gets thrown around in in different industries and we're really used to the vocabulary but maybe there are some people on that that aren't so familiar do you yeah, want to do that or will you? Yeah, starters. So those are the lactic acid bugs or that ferment the lactose in the milk uh, uh, to cause souring of the milk. And if you're doing it, having an industrial starter, you you'll have you know one or two or um, defined bugs in your milk, and that's what will be doing the the the, the souring of the milk, acidifying the milk. Whereas with these um, heritage starters that we're using, we're putting back into the milk a whole community of raw milk bacteria. And if we just kind of, if we can just start to taste the cheese, because actually we haven't done any of that. First of all, I'm going to taste the, the block cheese. I'm getting a smell of, I don't know, have you got some Jane too? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. So are, we, are, you, are you doing the our cheddar? No, I'm... Or the, the I'm doing block the, cheddar? doing the block cheddar. And the first thing I'm getting is something I'm getting from the starter. The commodity cheddar has used a starter called Lactobacillus helveticus, which gives a, a sweet note to the aroma and a sweet note to the flavor. Now this isn't, it's not too much, because, so they've used some, it's a, it tastes like they've used kind of Lactobacillus lactis, and, uh, which acidifies, and Streptococcus cremoris, which is another bug. But what you've got is, if you like, quite a narrow palate because you've got those individual bugs. I mean, it's perfectly a perfectly nice cheese. But if you have a look at our, have, try our cheese. First of all, I don't get that sort of candy sweet flavor. And actually, I'm not able, there's, there's layers of flavor is what I'm experiencing and, and those, if you like, if you're putting lots and lots of different microorganisms into the milk, they'll all be growing in a slightly different way. And they will, um, um, each one will leave its own trace in, in the cheese. So that's where you get, where you use these um, natural starters, which will be very, very typical of, of 
small batch cheddar makers, you have this, these layers of flavor that you get. Now, of course, not all, not all cheese makers around the world are actually able to use these. And that's why very often raw milk or, you know, you want the, the environment of the dairy, the environment that the cows are in really to speak to you and that flavor of the milk to speak to you. Because one of the things I think you're buying with these small batch cheeses is kind of that taste of a particular place, which I think is amazing. We better go on to, oh my goodness, cheese, rest of cheese making. We also do um, hand turn uh, in, the, in the cheddar process when we have the curds, when we've drained off the whey, we cut the curds into pieces and pile them up and that's called cheddaring. Now, if you're making it in, that in a, a factory, um, a cheddar was one of the cheeses that was first industrialized. So you do it in these huge um, cheddar masters, which are, you know, where this wall of curd comes to you and then it goes off a waterfall. You know, this wall of curd might be two meters high and, and 10 meters wide. Whereas what, what, what happens with us is that we actually turn those blocks of curd. And this is all about driving moisture out because cheddar's a relatively dry cheese. But it, it's all about, um, because we're doing it with individual human beings, I think you've got that attention and intention that individual human beings can give to try and find the best cheese in any, any block of milk. If you're making it in a big dairy, what you've got is, you've got this wall of milk coming towards you, you can never stop it. So you'll, you'll, be, you'll have, be having very reliable starters, you'll be having starters that will, uh, the way that you make it is so that on average, the cheese will be, will be um, um, gone to low battery. I hope I'm not gonna run out. I don't think so. Um, they, um, yeah, so, so you, again, it's about being able to customize what you're doing to, to the particular place. And I think, so I think just to add to that, so if you, if you visit a cheese, uh, uh, industrial cheese, dairy making cheddar, you, you can't see a lot of, it's in almost like a closed system. So you can't see the sorts of sensors and, and temp, you know, th thermometers and sensors that controls the environment. But, but the issue is, from time to time, obviously, there's variations in in the milk and in the way the bacteria are acting. Um, although with when you use a, one type of bacteria, it's much more predictable. Um, but because we're using um, uh, season, the, our milk is seasonal, uh, and our bacteria, there's lots of different um, metabolism activity going on from all of the different species of bacteria that we're using in our starter culture so really you need to a human there's a kind of artisan or art to the person the cheese maker who's paying attention to what's going on what, the acidity the temperature how quickly things are happening uh that and they and it's their decision making that really is the art of cheese making that goes into what we're doing Jane, thank you. I think, gosh, I feel, feel you really, um, I'd never, I'd never quite got it in quite that way. But yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, and then one of the other, because we're, because we're little and we want to make a rind on the cheese, what we do is we, um, when we press the cheese, we also put a cloth on it. We put them in cloth line molds, in presses for three days, dress it in a finer and finer cheesecloth. Che example, cheesecloth. It's kind of what I wore when I was being a hippie chick. Uh, um, uh, when I was a kid, you know, um, beautiful, soft cotton. And that we put that on the cheese and it allows the cheese to breathe in, while it's maturing. Um, as it's breathing, it gets this... Um, particular unique microflora you can see a, a cheese here um, a particular microflora that belongs to our farm our our store our how we how we mature We've just been running this amazing um um Affineur of the year competition with academy of cheese and that is really about understanding what those different environments do and how they impact cheeses so that 
Uh, whereas, of course, if you make it in a, uh, a factory, the, um, uh, the first hands that will go anywhere near it will be the person who open, keeps the, makes sure the bags are open so the curd, when it pours into the bags, uh, will all be in the right place. So, and, and then it won't actually get that interaction with the air. It won't lose moisture. And, you know, and, and it, so, you, so, you know, there's a skill to making the cheese that has those flavours. Um, and it is at a price. I mean, I absolutely don't want to suggest that it isn't perfectly acceptable cheese if you just need to, you know, if you, if you just want to eat. But you don't get that amazing... The thing about our cheddar is, oh no, I've got some of that cheese in my mouth, is you've got this d difference in the maturation from the nose to the rind, which is why for very often people say, you know, um, you know, don't, don't cut the nose off. And that's because what, what we need to do is to be able to taste that difference that comes from all that work we put in. And at the heart of the cheese, you've got it. It's lemony and it's buttery, creamy. When I taste it about halfway back, it's lost a bit more moisture. The maturation's been slightly different. So you kind of get a, some nice nutty notes. And then underneath the rind, you get that wonderful rind of aromas. People describe our, our store as giving horseradishy notes. And you get those different flavours right, um, right the way back. So you're, one of the things you're getting with the extra, with all of that extra work that we put into our cheese is those three different flavours. How does that sound, Jane? Yeah, absolutely. Ask you when you just got a bit of cheese in your mouth. Yeah, so yeah, so it's when you have. So I think what so what Mary was saying is this bit of the cheese will taste very different to this bit of the cheese because the way we've of the way we've made it. Whereas, or if this cheese this is the block cheddar, this piece of the cheese or this piece of cheese will taste um will will have a uniform taste all the way through, and that's really characteristic of um of this type of cheese and the natural rind that's created with the cloth and when it's when it's maturing in the store and, and there's mold growing um and also obviously there's the cloth is breathable so drying out and, and maturation happens so moisture loss and 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 maturation happens at a different rate throughout the cheese so when you have this type of cheese on your cheese board um you know it's obviously completely up to you how you do it and who are we to tell you how to eat your cheese however you might you might consider not to to, to when you're cutting it for your, a piece for yourself don't cut it like that rather cut it from the nose to the rind so that you can experience that spectrum of flavor all the way through the cheese um and what we notice with all of these things that we've got which is the, you know, the starters, the cows, the stage of lactation, which pasture the, the, the cows are in, um, that we've got quite a variation. And we, and we use the starters on a rotation. We've got quite a variation between different cheeses. So that one of the things that's really important is, to, is for us to distinguish those different families of flavour and I guess that's what we're always looking for is to ensure that we've got all of that complexity and we can celebrate it. So we'll be tasting our cheese at three months old and 12 months old, distinguishing the flavor families. Um, what's that? Um, we've got some sort of sharp, oniony, grassy. Then we've got a bit of meaty and brothy. And then we've got that umami buttery uh, uh sorry umami brothy um uh, um sorry umami with the meaty and then buttery and caramelly so that what what we've got this and we're looking for those flavors if you like to unfold unfold on your palate over time and that's partly 
from the fact that there are lots of different flavours, but also I think because of the way that the cheese has 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 lost some moisture, you've got some, if you like, unfolding that arises just from the way that it breaks down in your palate. Um, so I, I, yeah, I don't know, Jane, if you've got anything you want to add to that. No, I think, yeah, so length of flavour is, is something that we really go for. And because our cheese is, uh, is handmade and is asan, we don't always achieve that. And so that's why it's really important for us to select the cheese and so that we can we can um, decide, OK, this cheese actually should be uh, matured for a bit longer to achieve that flavour that we're looking for, whereas this cheese, actually, this is good right now. So we're looking at that that perfect age to, to sell the cheese. Um, and that's that's really what's important about our, our selection process and um, these kind of umbrella categories of flavour, the grassy meaty, brothy, umami, buttery, caramelly ones are, are really just a way of us communicating with one another when we're doing the grading and, and, our, and our customers and, and any interested people in the cheese, a kind of a common vocabulary that we use to help describe what we're tasting. Um, yeah, so. And, and, and I think one of the, I mean, one of the, when I looked at what, this actually comes round to what the Academy of Cheese, which is putting on the Big Cheese Weekend, uh, is, is all about. If you've only got, if you don't know anything about, about something, <clears throat> the only signals that, that you've got are either price or how it looks, uh, if you don't get to taste it. So, uh, it, you know, that's why it's so important that you get to taste cheese when you, um, uh, um, you get to taste cheese, get to think about it. But also, if you like, it's that knowledge that's required. I mean, what happened with, in the world of wine, was in the 70s, lots of wine was sold, you know, there was, it was either commodity wine or, or elite, elite wine. And what made the diff difference was the whole master of wine process, uh, um, the sommelier training, so that people actually could start to know about it. And that's why, uh, uh, and now what you've got is certainly in Britain, you've got 100,000 wine labels sold in Britain instead of a really arid, um, uh, uh, wine market in the 1970s and you can get you know go into a pub and ask for a name great variety you've got great wine selections in restaurants and and shops everywhere and I think that's what we're looking to do with Academy of Cheese and why we think it's really important that can you taste taste with knowledge because then you can actually then you can see what it what it is that, that you're paying for so would it be worth you just giving a quick, we've got maybe a few minutes and then maybe we'll leave some time for questions, but would it be worth, for, I mean, I, I see a lot of people on this, um, on this uh, uh, Instagram live that will know what the Academy of Cheese is, but just for the people who maybe aren't so aware uh, that have joined us today, could you just give us a, a quick, a really brief <laughs> um, description of what, what is Academy of Cheese? Okay, the Academy of Cheese, it's um, a non-profit that, that we've set, uh, constructed and it's about education and training of all parts of, of, of cheese. Everybody from consumers to the people, who, the retailers, the cheesemongers, um, the uh, cheese sommeliers. I want to create that whole profession of those people and cheesemakers that we can all have a common language. And we're doing this by four levels of certification, level one and level two, which already, you know, best part of 4,000 people have, have, tra have trained with across 80 countries. We've got 30 amazing training partners who do that. And um, we're, uh, they, they've done level one and level two, and we're just launching level three in November. In, in modules, I'm so excited. And the fourth level will be that Master of Cheese level, which, uh, and we've got a number of people working towards Master of Cheese, which is really, really exciting. And what's amazing is the way it really is joining people up across the world. Uh, and this is very much about, um, um, you know, giving people the tools so they can really further their love and enjoyment of cheese and create honor and honor and respect for, 
for everybody in cheese, you know, to so the cheesemongers know the amazing people there are. And I've said, well, let's create so cheese sommeliers. You know, we have we have wine sommeliers. Let's have cheese sommeliers who can really, really show that that great stuff um, that that really show off the cheese that that they're selling. Great. And in the chat, we've got a few people saying they can't wait for level three. Excited about level three. Yeah, coming soon. So. Coming soon. I know. It's really exciting. <laughs> I've been involved a little bit in seeing some of the way some of those courses, uh, some of the material. And it's, I'm just so excited to be sharing all of that. So, yeah. That, that's great. Thanks so much. And is there, are there any questions, is there anything that we've said that you want to talk about or ask about or want us to talk more about? Um, or are we just going to eat some cheese? We could eat some cheese. Did, did people uh, get some cheese to try along with us? Maybe, what do you think? Mm. What's your experience? Have we got cheese? any any questions? Oh, does your cheese vary in fl flavour throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, one of the... I've just put a large piece of cheese in my mouth. Um, <laughs> Me too. Uh, um, so, it, it's re what's really interesting that first day that the cows go out in in February, um, the very next day you'll you'll get different flavours, and I guess that I mean we work to make sure that the flavours of our cheese are pretty similar, and um, and there are differences. Um, I always think that when the clover is flowering, then you get some lovely sort of clovery notes in July and August, and um, I mean I think. Yeah, and very often the cheese made from <clears throat> when the cows are in inside. I mean, it, often I think it perhaps it's um I kind of it lacks that lovely, if you like, the the, the sort of cow breath thing of grey's grass. But it's still it's still they're on they're on um, um, grass silage or hay. So it's uh, it it's it's maybe slightly less expressive somehow. But it's still perhaps it's um perhaps it's more grown up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's kind of it's a, maybe a little perhaps a little bit more subtle or something like that. Yeah. Thanks for that. And so we've got another question here. Are, are you still making sheep's milk cheese? And the answer is uh, yes. When However, we can get hold of the milk. It's really hard to get hold of the milk. And so hey, if you... anybody knows of any sheep's milk that we can use, because we don't have our own sheep. We have cows, but we don't have our own sheep. So we're looking for uh, ideally local to the southwest or Devon, even better sheep's sheep's milk. Um, when we do, when we can get hold of it, we make a batch of sheep's milk cheese. So if you see used milk cheese uh, on offer uh, from Quicks, snap it up because it w might not be there for very long. And some, yeah. Um... I'm hoping that we will be able to get make make some more batches um, next spring it's when, very, the, when it's the sheep's milk fun. comes in. It's yeah. a, I think it's a beautiful cheese. Uh, yeah, I had some for my, I put I put some on some, um, I cooked some cabbage and chard, um, and I put some some salami in it, and then I just finished it off with some ewe's milk cheese yesterday for my supper yesterday mm. so you know, that, I, I thought yeah we really need to make some more of this i'm so excited by it Amazing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's yeah if I, so yeah let us know yeah let, yeah is there anything anything anyone else wants to know well so we've got some thank you from vancouver canada hi across the across the country i'm in toronto right now I uh, can't wait for my next trip to the UK. So many terrific cheeses, so little time. Agreed. Come, come hang out in, in the UK. Yeah, come and visit. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited that, that you've joined Thanks. us. And it's um, been so much fun speaking and actually so much fun talking with Jane, who I don't see nearly enough. Um, and and you've given me the opportunity to do that, so that's that's really that's really really lovely, and it's so nice looking at and eating cheese. Yeah, we've yeah we've just had a nice Sunday Sunday evening Sun, uh, afternoon Sunday afternoon evening cheesy cheesy. Mm. Hi Sam. Oh wow! 
look at all these people. Hello, everyone. And also goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to Thank say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining. Go on to the um, next, next thing. There's some very cool stuff happening in, in Big Cheese Weekend uh, uh, for the rest of the evening. So go play and remember to eat some cheese. Awesome. Enjoy. Enjoy. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.